and welcome back to Voyage of a Time Wanderer. Today I am here to do a very exciting readathon announcement. So I am very, very excited to be co-hosting the Library Love Readathon in the month of February with nine other lovely ladies from Booktube and Bookstagram, and I'm going to tell you all about what the Library Love readathon entails and what my prompts are uh, over the course of this video. So this readathon is going to take place the middle two weeks of February, so from February 6th to 19th, and it's a bit of a choose your own adventure readathon with so many hosts and prompts it's kind of up to you to choose how you want to participate. You can choose to join in with whichever hosts prompts kind of interest you the most, or you can pick and choose from a number of the hosts or try to do one prompt from each. It's up to you. The important part of this readathon is really just to celebrate our local libraries and hopefully to encourage you to go visit your local library and have some fun picking out some great reads from among your library shelves. So for the prompts, each of us hosts picked uh, prompts that kind of loosely tied into uh, an area of the library or a genre that you would find on your library shelves. So of course, being Voyage of a Time Wanderer, all of my prompts have to do with time wandering, with historical fiction. But before I get into what my prompts and the recommendations for my prompts are, uh, let me quickly go through who my other wonderful co-hosts are and what themes they chose their prompts around. Please be sure to go check out their channels and subscribe to their channels if you're not already. And hopefully between the 10 of us, you will find uh, a set of prompts that really matches with your reading interests and what you are wanting to pick up for February. So Stephanie from Ms. Richards Reads has all of her prompts themed around cozy animal companions. Rainy from Rainy Day Reads has prompts that are all fit under the umbrella of the finer things. Jessica, who doesn't actually have a booktube channel, but she's on Bookstagram and has a wonderful Bookstagram account, uh, her username there is Jaja Admirer of Words and Coffee, is doing a Bloody Valentine theme with prompts relating to true crime and kind of romance gone wrong. Kate Howe's prompts are all rooted in fairy tales. Tiffany from Beautiful Minutia is encouraging a mental midwinter vacation with travel-themed prompts. Naomi from Naomi's Bookshelf has a bunch of prompts that encourage you to explore what kind of media your library offers besides just novels, so audiobooks, movies, etc. Catherine from Taking Tea with Catherine encourages you to relax at your library's cafe with prompts related to book pairings. Petra Yu has some prompts for the fantasy lovers looking to go on a fantastical adventure in the month of February. And Melissa from the booktube channel Fully Booked has prompts that all have to do with language, how the book was written or translated. So be sure to head over to their channels to watch their announcement videos to find out the full details of the three prompts that they have chosen and what kind of recommendations they have that might suit their prompts. So like I said, all of my prompts have to do with historical fiction, which is my all-time favorite genre of books to read. And since we each have three prompts, I have three prompts that are related to historical fiction. The first prompt is to read a book that has a bookish word in the title. That could be library, librarian, bookstore, bookshop, page, tale, whatever it is. If it has kind of a bookish related word in the title, it will suit for this prompt. My second prompt is to encourage you to check out what new books your library has coming in, and that is to choose a historical fiction title off of the new arrival shelf. I think most libraries have, whether it is a new arrival section or a quick reads for recently published books, uh, some kind of bookshelf set aside for books that are new coming into the library. My library has both a new arrival shelf and they publish a blog post every week with what their newest arrivals are. So I'm really looking forward to reading some recently acquired historical fiction titles for this prompt. And then my third prompt actually started off as a bit of a joke with uh, Catherine from Taking Tea with Catherine. She suggested uh, based off of that picture that was floating around the internet last summer of a bookstore that had set up uh, an entire display of historical fiction titles uh, under the theme woman in period costume with her back face to the camera and 
I thought that that was so funny it just had to be the prompt because if you have followed uh, historical fiction publishing at all in the last few years you know that this is such an overused cover trope and it's always fun to have a prompt that's based off of the cover and what the book looks like. And so for my third prompt it is simply to choose a historical fiction book that has a woman in period costume uh, facing away on the cover. So I did also want to give just a handful of recommendations for each of my prompts. So for the first prompt to read a book that has a bookish word in the title, uh, I have a couple recommendations, a few that I have read and then a few that I haven't read that are definitely contenders for me to pick up uh, for this readathon. Uh, the first is if you're looking for a classic work of historical fiction and that is A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. Obviously we have the bookish word tale in this title which qualifies it for this prompt. I'm sure most of you are familiar with this book but it is Victorian historical fiction so it was written in the Victorian era but it is about the French Revolution so it is uh, classic historical fiction. And this is Dickens' classic book about what happens when uh, an aristocratic expat family returns to France in the middle of the revolution after having lived in England for a number of years. The other book that I really wanted to recommend for this prompt is another of my all-time favorite books and that is The Book of Negroes by Lawrence Hill. This is another one that I'm sure you've heard me talk about before and obviously it has the word book in the title so uh, that's definitely a bookish word. This book tells the life story of a woman called Aminata from her childhood all the way up into her elderly years and it follows her from her childhood in West Africa through her time as an enslaved person in America. Then it follows through the events of the American Revolution when she is enumerated in the Book of Negroes which is an actual historical document that recorded the names of uh, free black men and women who traveled to Canada with the Loyalists. And then she ends up traveling back to Africa to help establish Sierra Leone and ends her life in the UK working in the abolitionist movement. So it's a really fascinating story that covers uh, such a large swath of both time and place and I can't recommend it highly enough. And then I have a couple of books that I haven't actually read yet but I have friends who have read who have recommended it highly to me so these are definitely contenders to be added to my own TBR for the Library Love Readathon. The first is The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. This is kind of I think almost a modern classic of YA historical fiction and according to Goodreads it has been marked by myself as to read since 2014 so that is I guess eight years on my TBR so it's definitely one that I would love to get to sometime soon. This book is set during World War II and follows a young girl as she I guess really starts to love books and starts rescuing books from Nazi book burnings. So she has kind of acquiring a collection of illicit books and what makes this uh, story particularly unique is that it is narrated by death which is obviously kind of a unique literary device to have a book narrated from that perspective. Then another World War II era book that I am considering reading for this prompt is The Librarian of Auschwitz by Antonio Iturbe. This book is actually in translation, it wasn't originally written in English so it might work really well for some of the other host prompts as well. I believe this is based on a true story of a teenage girl who was asked by fellow prisoners in Auschwitz to guard the few volumes of books that they had managed to sneak past the guards on their arrival and so she kind of ended up becoming the unofficial librarian of Auschwitz. And then another book with the word librarian in the title which I think would be perfect for this prompt and it was actually published in 2021 and has a woman in period costume facing away on the cover so if you could find this book at your library it could potentially fit all three of my prompts and that is The Personal Librarian by Marie Benedict. So this is actually also based on a true story of the life of Belle de Costa Green who was the personal librarian for J.P. Morgan, one of the richest men in New York at the time. And so we are following her story as she uh, catalogs and acquires uh, new rare books for uh, J.P. Morgan's personal library but she is also hiding a secret. She is actually a black woman who is passing as white and if anyone finds out the truth about her heritage and her past she'll lose everything that she has built in her life. So it definitely sounds like an intriguing book and one that would be perfect to read in February for Black History Month. My mom has read this book and highly recommended it to me so it's definitely one of my top contenders uh, to read for this readathon. 
So those are my suggestions for my first prompt, read a book with a bookish word in the title. For my second prompt, read a historical fiction book from your library's new arrival shelf. That's really going to depend on what new historical fiction titles your library has recently acquired. I'll link the Goodreads Choice Awards for 2021 uh, so you can get an idea of kind of some of the best books that were published last year in historical fiction to maybe keep your eye out for one of those titles. But for this prompt, I really just want people to have fun going to their library and seeing what's on the new arrival shelf, choosing a book kind of on a whim, maybe one that you wouldn't have otherwise picked up or wouldn't have picked up right away, but seeing it there on that newly acquired shelf, uh, that will be your motivation to pick it up for this prompt. So I really hope that everyone is able to find a new arrival historical fiction that they're really interested in. And then for my third prompt, Woman Facing Away in Period Costume, there are a plethora of books that could fit this prompt, so I'm sure if you were just browsing through the shelves of your library, you would be able to find a book that would suit this prompt pretty quickly. But if you're stuck or just looking for some inspiration about which book to pick up, I have a few titles to suggest that I have really enjoyed reading that also have covers that fulfill this prompt. The first is another of my all-time favorite books, and that is the Kristen Laverne's Daughter Trilogy by Sigurd Unset. This is my copy of the first book in the trilogy, and of course we have a woman in period costume facing away. This is young Kristen in her uh, Norwegian uh, traditional outfit. This book trilogy follows Kristen uh, from her childhood through her adolescence and married life into her old age. And we really just get to know Kristen so well over the course of these books. Uh, I feel like you have a genuine emotional connection to her by the end of the third book. And uh, it's a fascinating story about what life was like in medieval Norway. So if you haven't had a chance to pick up these books, maybe consider reading the first book in the trilogy to fill the third prompt for this readathon. This book, As Bright as Heaven by Susan Messner, was one of my favorite uh, fiction reads from 2020, and we obviously have uh, the three sisters in period costume facing away. Uh, this book is set during the Spanish flu epidemic in 1918, and we are getting the story of this family's time passing through the Spanish flu pandemic uh, from the perspective of the three different sisters as well as their mother. They have just moved from a small farming community into Philadelphia when the flu hits. And the father of the family has an uncle who runs a funeral parlor in the city and he's getting older and has asked for this father and his family to move to town and help take over the business. And of course, uh, they are instantly swept into the events of the pandemic because they are involved in the funeral industry during this time. So if you're looking for some uh, historical pandemic fiction, this might be a really good pick. If you're looking for a historical mystery series, I obviously can't recommend the Maisie Dobbs series highly enough, and a lot of the covers for that series have uh, illustrations of her in period costume facing away. I've done a whole uh, video review series, which I'll link uh, if you're curious to know more about the series. But the basic premise is that we are following Maisie Dobbs, who grew up in a poor family in London and ended up in service in an estate house where she learns how to read and is taken under the wing a bit of a family friend, Dr. Maurice Blanc, and he provides her with an education and teaches her private investigation skills. And so following the events of the First World War, she is involved in a lot of cases that kind of have to do with the impact of war on society. Another two books which I have talked about recently which have covers which also fit with this prompt are The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society and Last Christmas in Paris. Both of these books are epistolary novels, one set during World War II and one set during World War I, which deal with a lot of bookish themes but also have a sweet romance at the center of the plot which I think would really suit well with February and Valentine's Day. If you haven't read either of these, I would highly recommend them for this prompt. If you're looking for a bit more hard-hitting historical fiction, I would highly recommend The Headmaster's Wager by Vincent Lam. This book is set during the Vietnam War, but it has a unique perspective because our main character is a Chinese expat living in the diaspora in Vietnam, so he's kind of in the middle in between the Vietnamese and the American side. He doesn't really have strong opinions about how he wants the war to end up, but he still ends up obviously deeply affected by the events of the war and his life is irrevocably changed by uh, the forces at play. This definitely has some graphic scenes of war violence, 
but it also was a very immersive and well-written story that I found fascinating. And then lastly, uh, another trilogy to recommend, which I haven't read since high school, but was one of my first introductions to adult historical fiction, and that is the Josephine B. trilogy by Sandra Golland. This book series is all about the life of Josephine Bonaparte, the wife to Napoleon, and we follow her life and marriage over the course of these three books. I remember being absolutely swept away by these books, and they're definitely ones that I would want to reread at some point. So those are my recommendations for my three prompts that have to do with historical fiction. Read a book with a bookish word in the title, read a book from the new arrival shelf of your library, and read a book that has a cover with a woman in period costume facing away. So I really hope that you'll consider participating in the Library Love Readathon, and I hope even more that you'll consider participating uh, with my three historical fiction reading prompts. If you do end up participating, please leave a comment and let me know, or post over on Bookstagram. We're going to be using the hashtag, hashtag library love readathon. So I would love to see your posts over on Instagram, and hopefully this is a way that we can just spread library love in the month of February, celebrate all the wonderful things that our local libraries do, and have a great time choosing some wonderful reads to enjoy from among the stacks uh, in our local libraries. So I myself am a longtime library lover. I have been a library user since I was very, very young, and I definitely would not be able to read the quantity and uh, breadth that I do if I didn't have access to my local library's catalog. So I'm so grateful to libraries and librarians, and I think this is going to be so much fun uh, celebrating library love in February. So until next time, enjoy wandering through the pages of a good book.